All right, solids, solids by revolution. Making a solid by taking a base area and rotating it around an axis. So we'll start with region R. You're going to rotate it around the x-axis to form a solid. So to draw it, um, reflect across the axis of rotation. So for us, that's the x-axis. That makes life a lot easier when it's one of the axes. A little later, we'll reflect it around things that aren't on the axis. So whatever the axis of rotation is, reflect it across that. Then try to draw some some 3D circles. And hopefully that gives you a sense of what the picture looks like or what the shape looks like. So that one looks like a like a Hershey kiss on its side, I guess. Yes. Sideways tent, but yes. A cone, a sideways cone. Circus. All right, each cross section is perpendicular to the. So if I slice that up, what are those? Um, there's a slice right there. X -axis? They're perpendicular to the x axis. So that's the same as if we weren't rotating it. Yeah, so it's, we're still going to add up the slices. That idea of adding up the slices, we're going to do that again. Uh, each cross section is in the shape of a circle. circle. Where area equals pi r squared. So if you think back to yesterday, we added up the slices. Today, we're going to add up the slices. So the volume would be the integral from 0 to p. 0 to, yeah, I don't know what spot that is. Let's call it something. B. B it is. 0 to B. And I'm just going to put area of a circle right there times dx because all of those circles have that thickness, infinitely small thickness, but thickness of dx. And the area of a circle is pi times r squared, there's r, but that height is the y value, is the function. So pi times f of x squared dx. And you could definitely move that pi out front. And you could definitely move the pi out front. The biggest danger is forgetting the pi altogether. Yeah. That is the the most frequent mistake. So it's f it's built a different way than yesterday. Yesterday we built sort of cross sections off of an area. Today we're taking an area and spinning it. But in the end, it's sort of the same thing. Like we're taking slices. We know the slices are, today they're all circles. So pi r squared. Well, I say they're all circles. This is the disk method. That's a disk, because all the slices are disks. Disk and washers. Well, the, the next one's going to be washers. So I'm assuming that just means on the y-axis. No, this is this is a problem with calling them washers. Is that so few people know what a washer is? <laughs> Anybody in construction? I know, uh, kids these those days. Those this is my old man rant. Get off my lawn. Or Find or out what a you, washer you is. Where you're trying to drop the washer in the hole. When you're trying to tossing washers, those are... <laughs> so washers are the thing that look like that. They have a hole in them. I should have got one. There's probably... They go on screws before they Yeah, they, they go on screws before they go into the wall so the screw doesn't go into the wall. Yes. There's probably... There's probably a hundred of them in this room right now holding stuff together. Small. All right, so let's see what happens here. Um, now consider this region M, and region M is the, gr the area between F and G. 
and we're going to revolve that around the x-axis. So there's my x-axis. There's my axis of rotation. Mm -hmm. So job one is to just reflect it across. Don't worry about the circles yet because that gets a little hard. So we'll, we'll go from A to B on this one. Okay. So however high it is there, it'll be that far below right there and then this spot is somewhere right there just kind of pick, picking a few key points there so there's the bottom of the weird looking shape I don't want to go too crazy with the colors but That reflects to that. The top is a little bit different. Let's figure out where that point is and see how far down that one goes. I just called it S. Something like that. And then we'll draw that weird looking shape. It looks almost like a gumdrop. Maybe like a cartoon so, eye when they're so tired that they do this. No, it looks like an acorn. <laughs> the bottom one looks like an acorn, yes. yes. Or the top one when, like, the, like when a cartoon is scared and they go... Like, Wait, what? Eyes go wide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Bottom one looks like an acorn. Top one looks like an upside down acorn. Excellent. Okay. The, the trouble is, or the trick is, those are not. That's not a 2D shape. Like that happened when we rotated this whole thing out of the page and down to the bottom, out of the page, down to the bottom, and onto the back. So I'm going to try to draw some circles on the ends. It's in between. Just so you know, Mr. Wolf, your reflection is incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Why is that so good? What? Also going to try to draw some in the middle here. Would that mean you'd have, to, you'd have to subtract the two? Yeah, we are going to do some subtracting here. Uh, so somebody want to try to describe what that shape is? Like the last one was a sideways Hershey's kiss. So can somebody visualize that and explain what... A creepy cartoon eyes. Which shape? It looks like a horn. Like a spinning coin. It looks like an eyebender. Oh, whatever it's like on the thing, it's like d -d 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 -d. half of a bowl. Hole. Yeah, but what like does that you, shape look like? No, like if you spin a washer, which, the shape? like a coin, like when you spin a coin on a So, desktop. okay, it would have helped maybe if I had a pencil to shade oh, the... Uh, it looks like a cylinder that's squished in the middle. <laughs> or like whenever you see like a movie... A sideways depict, cylinder. Or whenever it's trying to, like a movie's trying to depict like a... As a 3D shape. Nice. So we decided on donut. You just need to draw like a think part of angle of it next to it. I think we like decided on the evil spider. You need to do the like the, the angle of the side angle. Uh huh. Maybe it's like a balloon. I need to draft it better. Yeah, but it, that's if you look at it as a 2D shape. You're right. It could be one of those like. Okay. <laughs> you don't see that that's a 3D shape. Each cross section is perpendicular to. x-axis. Each cross-section is in the shape of a circle. Well, I wouldn't say a circle. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Back up. It is a circle, but it's a circle with a hole in it. They are all circles. The outside, that's a circle, but it has a hole like in it. Circle minus circle. Circle squared. <laughs> circle. I'm lost. Circle with a hole or a washer. That's the Yes. The volume of this solid it would be, so they're all dx, they're all stacked up in the x axis, or the x direction, from A to B. But I need to do, like this is a, like each cross section is a circle with a circle missing. Yeah. 
Yes. Right? If I take a cross section, it's a circle with the circle missing. Go ahead. What I, what I did was, um, like, I separated them into two radii, like pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared. That's exactly what we do. Pi r squared minus pi r squared. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You used r1 and r2. Most calculus teachers use capital R and lowercase r. But r1 and r2 is fine as long as you label them right as you're working. So big R is the outside radius. So, so there's big R. Because that's from the axis to the outer edge. Yes. Axis to outer edge. We can again think about top minus bottom. So that's f of x minus 0 is the that big R. Little r, yeah, is to the red line. Is this, this is little r. Axis to inside edge. Again, you can do top minus bottom. Top is G, and bottom is 0. Okay. So, top, top is I understand the concept, but is this calculating like one revolution, or is this calculating like an infinite spin? Okay, so pi r squared. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, let me see if I can answer you. Is it calculating one revolution or an infinite revolution? Like, is it infinite so as it spins, it traces out a volume. Okay. That volume is what we're gonna we're gonna find the volume of. Okay. So you only have to spin it once, but if you if it's better to think of it as spinning just like constantly, so that you could visualize it, that's fine too. Okay. I didn't mean to complicate it. I'm just wondering. The answer is either. Okay. Great. Ty. So unless. <laughs> Are we ever going to use this in real life unless we're measuring the volume of the donut? Yeah, you're going to be in the grocery store and like... How much? Yeah. What's the volume of that donut? <laughs> I mean, come up with an equation to... I'm going to whip out these notes one day and measure a donut. You just need those on your little phone. And so a lot of times, we won't plug a lot of things in. If you've specified what R is, big R and little r, and you've got it set up, then you're ready to go to the calculator. I just factored out the pi. Big circle minus little circle. You're adding up all the washers, all the big circle minus little circles. Julia? Is the value of the big R and the little R going to vary depending on where you pick? Yes. Yes, that's why big R is a function of x. Wherever you go in x, big R is changing. Right? It gets bigger, 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 and then it gets smaller, smaller, smaller. Same with little r, although it starts big, gets small, and then gets bigger. So, like, how do you know what a and b are? No, like what big r and little r. Well, you'll have to know. Like, big r goes to the outer edge, so let's figure out which one is the outer edge. Because big r goes to this edge, is distance to this. Well, that big R is, so that f of x is the big R. So, like, this question doesn't give us, like, a formula. Like right. We don't have the details of this to plug it in. It would say f of x is 3x squared that minus sine x, whatever. And that's what big R would be? That would be big R. Yes. And this is why you'd want to put it in the calculator, because then you could just do, you know, y1 squared minus y2 squared rather than typing in all of that and squaring it and then all the other one and squaring it. Calista? Why is f of x minus 0? Why is it 0? Yeah, what? Shouldn't it be g of x? Um, no, because I don't want... That's a good question. I don't want this... This distance doesn't really do me any... Doesn't really help me. That would be f oh, minus so g. Whole okay. That would be good for finding the area. But I want to find the area of that circle... 
So I need r, meaning this whole thing, and then I need little r, meaning this little piece. So it's not pi r squared minus pi r squared. Okay, so disks, this will, maybe this will make more sense when we get to an example here. So for disk, adding up from A to B, pi r squared dx. And the tricky part on all of these is always like, well, what's r? Or what's little r? So that would be if there's no hole, that's a disk. If there's a washer, or so if there is a hole, then we call it a washer. And it's big circle minus little circle. You can factor out the pi, but a lot of times we leave the pi on there because seeing pi r squared reminds us that, oh yeah, it's a circle. If you take the pi out, sometimes you lose the concept of what's going on. So it's fine to take the pi out, especially when you go to the calculator. But usually when we write the equation, um, we leave it like this because now maybe that helps remind us that it's, it's just big circle minus little circle. Well, we got several days to do this, so that's the good news. Um, let's pass on the next one. We'll save that for tomorrow because that's going to be revolved around the y-axis. <laughs> so let's, let's hold off on that. Number one, see if we can get through the first two of these. It would be great. Consider the region R bounded by the graph of y equals x squared, y equals 0, x equals 2. So we've got it all graphed out for us. So there's my region R. And you can see for A through E, it's all the same region. We're just going to rotate it different places or different ways. Find the volume of the solid formed by revolving about the x-axis. So x-axis is my axis of rotation. So I'm going to mirror it across. I'm going to flip it over the other side. Uh, let's see. This is 1, 2. So that points 2, 4. So I can go down there to 2, 4 on the other side, or 2, negative 4. That points 1, 1, because this is y equals x squared. So if I just mirrored it over, that's what it would look like. But I didn't just mirror it over. I need to trace out that whole volume. And so this is the, the sideways Hershey's Kiss thing. All of these shapes will be circles, if that's what you mean. All of the cross sections will be circles because you're rotating. Pardon? They're all going to be like what you Yes. All the cross sections will be circles. I'm not sure that's what you're asking. I don't know. I think, yeah. <laughs> all the cross sections are circles. They're either disc if there's not a hole, or there's washers if there is a hole. Does this one have a hole in it? No, that's a solid thing all the way through. pi r squared dx because my, my slices are in the x direction. That means my limits need to be in the x direction. So from where to where am I, what's Zero my limits? <coughs> 0 to 2. And r, the radius of that circle equals y. Okay, it it's a y, that's fine. 
but I need it to be in terms of x. So what is that y squared. equal? x squared. The radius is x squared. Zero to two pi r squared dx. Then it's just a calculator problem. 20.106. Yeah. Let's try to get B done and then. So B, if it says revolving about the line y equals, does that mean we're doing it on the x-axis? No, the line y equals negative 2 is, is this right here. But that doesn't, does that mean we're flipping it over the x-axis? It means we're flipping it over the line y equals negative 2. So there's definitely going to be a hole. So my area is still this area. But when I rotate it around y equals negative 2, there's going to be a hole there. It's like someone took a Hershey kiss and drilled out the middle of it. Why does r equal x squared? Because this is r right here. And that's a y distance, right? It's an up and down distance. But that y distance is x squared. Because my radius is is tracking along here, and that is x squared. But isn't it minus bottom as well? Well, for this one, okay, we got Mia on board. Just need 29 more people. We're almost there. Um, let's try to draw it. This one's weird because there's an inside radius. You know what big R is for this one? You got to draw it from axis to outer edge. Ah, we're not gonna get done. It's x squared. It's still x squared. Mm, x minus two. Well, it's x squared. Or minus one because it's, that's little r. Plus two. Plus two. Yeah, because it's more area. It's more. It's more. This is x squared, and then that's plus two. Little r would be two, a constant two. So it would cancel out. No, because you're going to square it, and no, it's not going to cancel. Is an eraser? All right, if you could try, if you could just try one and two, that would be great. We got plenty of time, so don't worry about it. Try one and two. Worksheet three, one and two. Yeah, not now, but homework is two problems, one and two.